I want to uh, encourage somebody here. If you're passing through a hard time, know that God is with you. God is your shield. And He is your protector, your defense. Amen. Na 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 na. in my life, Lord. The enemies around me. You are a shield about me. Flood rise against me. Are you furious or bastard in my life, Lord? Is the Lord. Amen. John uh, chapter number 3 verses 16. It's a common scripture. We are going to look at various, various scriptures. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, this is a PDA night. <laughs> For those who are wondering what PDA means, it means public display of affection. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, God is a mysterious God, but He loves openly. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Uh, let us look at first John chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. But the emphasis is there. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, upon us, that we should be called, we should be called the sons of, turn to your neighbor, tell them, you should be called the son of God. <laughs> Romans chapter 5, my emphasis in, is in verse 5. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Let us read the last part of verse 5 together again. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Father, we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. According to Isaiah chapter 54 verse 9, which the man of God, Mr. T, was leading us as he was, as we were making declarations uh, in the prayer time, God is not angry with us. In fact, he swears by himself that he will no longer be angry with us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God has sworn that his mercy will endure forever for you. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, neighbor. The, mercy the mercy of God is upon your life by an everlasting eternal oath. Think about it. The mercy of God is upon your life by an everlasting and an eternal oath. God is everlasting. God is eternal. God lives forever. 
He cannot swear by anything greater because there is nothing greater than God. And so he swears by himself. And in Isaiah 54, 19, he swears and says, I am not angry at you. Ah, uh, I think that is a place, a nice place to clap and say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Now, I'd like you to understand one thing. That God's public display of affection is in sacrificing his own son, Jesus the Christ. God's public display of affection was in sacrificing his own word so that you, his image, may be reconciled to him, the object. God is the object from which all images project. The reflection of the object is in the mirror. The mirror is the word of God according to John chap J James chapter 1 verse 21. The Bible says that if we look intently into the word of God, it reflects our very souls. It talks about a person who reads the word and forgets is like one that looks into the mirror and forgets what he looks like. But a person who reads the word and looks intently in it will be blessed indeed. He will be blessed. Why? Because he's the real reflection of the image of God that he is will be manifested when you look into the scriptures. Praise the Lord. I like the scriptures. I like looking at the scriptures. Why? Because the scriptures reflect my strengths. I have never seen anywhere in the Bible that God has portrayed me as a weak person. The thoughts of God towards you are thoughts of strength. They are thoughts of power. They are thoughts of achievement. They are thoughts of success. They are thoughts of greatness. They are thoughts of might. They are thoughts of great and mighty successful prosperity. God always thinks the best towards you. That is why he says, I know. And that know there is the connotation from the same. In Genesis chapter number 4 verse 1 where Adam knew his wife. Connoting having an intercourse. Thereby showing, uh, showing uh, pictorially that it is having an experience with. Telling you that God knows and has an experience with the thoughts that he is thinking towards you. He says, I know I have an experience. I have an intercourse. I mute upon and I have, I have known the end from the beginning of the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. They are thoughts of peace and not of evil. They are thoughts to give you a future and a hope. God is not concerned only with your present. He is concerned with your future. He is concerned with your outcome. He is concerned with what you are going to be, not what you are right now. You may see yourself great right now, God sees you greater. You may see yourself, you may see yourself weak, God sees you stronger. He sees you better than you are, even when you seem to be getting better. That is why your present best is mediocre to him. Because there is always another level when you walk with God. There is always another step. The steps of a good man are ordained, ordered by God. God will always show you the next step. And he publicly displays that by Jesus Christ. Let us look at the reason why God loves us. God loves us because we are his image. Genesis chapter 1 
verse 26 and 27 the thought of God was projected in the scriptures where God says let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let him have rule let him have dominion let him have authority let him have power over the birds of the air the fish of the sea and all the animals that creep over the surface of the earth let us make man in our image the image there is not just a reflection of the object the image there is a projection of his nature turn to your neighbor tell them neighbor I am not just a reflection of God I am a projection of his kind kindness is projected when you see me walking in kindness if God is tolerant God is tolerant. You see tolerance of God through me when I tolerate others. When God is merciful, you see mercy through me when I am merciful to others. God is loving. You see love at work through me. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who he gave to us. So I am a projection of the image of the person and the nature of God I am not just an image I'm not just a reflection I am a projection ah, I wish this enters your spirit I am not just a reflection I am a projection you see the carnal mirror reflects it reflects from an image but the spiritual mirror, which are the scriptures, they project the image. Ah. The mirror tells me I have some pimples on my face. The mirror tells me my eyes are a little bit dull. The mirror tells me the red is a little bit not yet. So I have to apply more. But the mirror of the scriptures, they tell me how perfect I am. They tell me how righteous I look. When I see myself black, he sees me white. When I see myself downcast, he sees me uplifted. That is why the Bible says that when they shall say there is a casting down, you shall say there is a lifting up. And therefore the public display of God's affection is shown by the projection of the Son of God, the real mirror in which our image is projected so that we see ourselves as God sees us. The great problem with this is that there is a dispensation that we are living and thank God that that dispensation is coming to an end there is a dispensation of the sinful man where God created the perfect man when he created God did not create a child he created a perfect man <laughs> turn to your neighbor tell them mature God does not deal with children he commits them to guardians <laughs> So God created Adam and Eve. They were two mature beings. Created the first couple, the first marriage, the first family. And they deviated, they fell. Fell short of the glory of God when they disobeyed. And therefore they were committed to the oppressor. They were shown mercy. It was mercy for God to send them out of Eden. Because then they would have been like the devil. Because the devil lives forever in sin. And so God did not want the man to eat of the tree of life. And to live forever in sin. So he put cherubs. And he protected the entry point to the tree of life. Until he would reveal the tree of life to mankind. By his word. Because Jesus is the word, the bread of life. And he is the tree of life. Tree represents a generation. So therefore when you eat from Jesus, you are being projected into a generation of life. 
And so when Jesus would come into the earth, he would come as a human being that would project the true image of what the first Adam lost. And so Jesus began to command nature. He began to walk on water. He began to reflect glory. He began to heal the sick. He began to deal with the cells that are misplaced. He healed tumors. He healed cancer. He healed uh, all manner of disease. He raised the dead. And he himself went to the cross so that he becomes the price for which all redemption would be made. He became the check for our redemption. Praise the Lord. Mm, mm, that is so powerful. He became the check for our redemption. God wrote a check and paid it in hell so that your soul may be redeemed. Uh, I pray that you will see that sense. Hallelujah. Now, men don't see the love of God because of sin. Bible says that sin, the hand of the Lord is not too short to save. The eye of the Lord is not blind to see, nor his ear too dull to hear. But our sins have separated us from him, not him from us. It is us from him. Our sins have separated us from him. And sin is in three levels. Sin is in three levels. If I may teach this a little bit. There is the level called iniquity. There is the level called iniquity. There is, which is generational. It is generational sin. Iniquity means to deviate from what is right. It means wickedness. Gross injustice. It means a wrongful act. It means denial of the sovereignty of God. So that's chapter 20 verse 4 to 7 says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any, of any, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and to the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me and shewing mercy unto thousands of them that love me akin my commands. I visit the deviation of sin. I visit the wickedness. I visit the gross injustice. I visit the wrongful acts. I visit the absence of moral or spiritual values. I visit lawlessness. I visit the denial of my sovereignty in every generation. God, why does he visit? He visits to convict. Uh, God does not visit to punish. He visits to convict. The punishment comes when you deny the conviction. Meaning in every generation, God gives a chance for repentance. You did not hear me. I said in every generation, God gives a chance for repentance. That is why he visits the iniquity. And that is why he gives you opportunity to repent. So that he may show you mercy. Praise the Lord. I'd like to teach here a little bit because... We have been taught that God visits the sin to punish it. Actually, punishment is the allowance of God 
after you have denied conviction. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you go to a court, when you go to a court, and you, you are presented with a, with a case to answer, in your defense, you either agree or deny. When you deny, they begin the process of convicting you of that crime that you have committed. And if you continue to deny, the law is brought to show you that you are guilty. And when you appear guilty, when you continue to still deny, you are either given a punishment you are told this is what you are going this is what you are going to pay or this is what you are going to suffer so god being a loving and merciful god will convict every generation of their sin so that he gives them opportunity thank god the court of heaven is not like the court of the earth because the court of heaven gives mankind the opportunity to repent and turn from their wickedness so that God shows them mercy and removes the consequence. You see, the consequence of mankind was to suffer eternal damnation in hell. But now, in every generation, because Jesus died for our iniquities in every generation Jesus has the power the blood of Jesus is speaking concerning the deviation of mankind it is speaking the redemption of all mankind unto God and so God still visits iniquity in every generation but he visits iniquity so that he may give opportunity for repentance and for turning and for change. Hallelujah. I thank God that in every generation there is change. Ah. I say in every generation there is potential for change. I say in every generation there is potential for change. Your father had many wives. Your mother was in a certain manner your sisters have a certain lifestyle your brothers are dying in a certain way but god the lord visits your family so that he gives a chance in that generation for change and you who are here in the presence of god you are the agent for change in your generation you will unlock the potential for the change in your generation. You will turn that potential into kinetic. I say you will turn the potential into kinetic. You will turn that Okoshando Brazier. You see, foundation stones are heavy. But sorry. The foundation stones are heavy. So that's why we when the foundation is laid, we go slow. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The second level of sin is trespass. You see, the first level of sin is iniquity. The second level of sin is trespass. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the sound praise the Lord. The second level of sin is trespass. And trespass means to be illegal. It is a common connotation when they say trespassers will be. Trespassers will be. Trespassers will be. To trespass means to go where you are not supposed to go. To do what you are not supposed to do. It means to be in offense against man or against God. And any time you are in offense, you are prosecuted. The reason why the devil is the accuser of the brethren is because man has sinned and has fallen short of the glory of God. And any time we trespass, when we go where we are not supposed to go, when we do what we are not supposed to do, 
the devil will accuse us that's why many a times we go to God asking him to bless us and the devil is there to say how can you bless him and he has done this that he is not supposed to do how can you say that you are going to bless him yet he has spoken lies and he is not supposed to speak lies how can you say that you are going to uplift him when you yourself you cast down the liars so cast him down so that you may uphold your word and because God upholds the law he judges you by the law but thanks to Jesus because now there is therefore no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus for the law of sin and death has killed me but the law of the spirit of life has raised me from the dead the law of the spirit of life has set me free from the law of sin and death anytime we trespass we are illegal that's why when you pray he does not answer let me tell you there is no answer like wait show me in the scriptures where God said to a man wait where a man prayed and he said wait the scripture I know is stand still and know that I am God the scripture I know is tarry until the promise is released but that tarry was already fulfilled we are not tarrying anymore for the Holy Ghost he's already on the earth ah. <laughs> when I teach about receiving the Spirit I always tell people that we don't tarry anymore for the Holy Spirit because he's already on the earth it's a matter of having faith and you receive it faith and desire is equals manifestation <laughs> desire something build faith for it and you'll see manifestation <laughs> you desire a car build faith for it you desire a house build faith for it you desire an employment build faith for it how do you build faith faith comes by hearing and hearing hearing are only two there is one hearing the information and there is two hearing the revelation uh, we use this to hear and hear and hear so that we keep remembering but once it is settled thy word is forever settled in heaven you have set eternity heaven in the heart of man so when it is settled in your spirit out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh and the Bible say what things soever thou shalt say thou shalt have aye, aye. praise the Lord praise the Lord therefore when we trespass we go beyond the places where we should go we do what we are not supposed to do Paul says the things that I want to do I do not and the things that I do not want to do I find myself doing oh wretched man that I am who shall save me from this wretched body of death Paul was in other words revealing the mystery the three levels of sin and this one is iniquity the second one is trespass we trespass because of ignorance many a times we do what we are not supposed to do because of what we don't know about what we are supposed to do ah praise the lord let me tell you something this generation knows nothing about sex that is why they trespass in the area of sex they have not learned the essence of why God created sex it is God that created sex yet it is sex that perverts the whole world the thing is that because they have not learned about it 
because of their ignorance they trespass fornication is trespassing adultery is trespassing lesbianism homosexuality is trespassing god created it for consummation of marriage i wrote in the facebook the other day that sex before marriage or intersexual intercourse before marriage is for consumption but sexual intercourse within the concept the context of marriage is for consummation consummation in a manisha kufunga hiyo covenant when you have gone asked for permission to the parents to marry that lady then you have gone in the presence of the witnesses you have been counseled by the elders and you have had the right knowledge and now you come to in the presence of god in the presence of the visible witnesses and the invisible witnesses in heaven and on earth and you announce to everybody in the presence of the priest and you put on the sign of the ring because every covenant has a token this is the token of the of the covenant now the consummation of the covenant just as in the old testament when they were the consummation of the covenant in the old testament was when you have offered a sacrifice you eat the meat with the priest ay ay nikikuja na mbuzi ni ofe covenant na nime covenant na Mungu nina me covenant na Mungu in the presence of the priest now when that meat has been burnt up it is not burnt up completely unless it is a burnt offering now when i sit down for the consummation of that covenant i eat the meat that has been burnt on the altar with the priest to show that we have had because the priest priest means representative of god so he represents god to me and he represents me to god so when i eat with him that is the consummation of the covenant now sex is the consummation of the covenant of marriage between a man and a woman that's why people trespass because they do not know this thing is for the consummation not for consumption any time you go to have sexual intercourse in a trespassing kind of way you sin against god and you consume you just do a consumption and then you are consumed you are consumed with guilt you are consumed with fear you are consumed with anxiety jeka ana ball jeka ako na aids jeka ako na std jeka ma jeka ma je nikipatikana jeka kungekuwa na cctv you are consumed with the guilt of sin praise the lord when you trespass you are consumed that's why people most people come to the presence of god because you are illegal god does not hear you you think you are waiting on god but god is waiting on you because if he is faithful if you want him to be faithful towards his word he will act because his work as a righteous judge is to uphold the law so if if the wages of sin is death you die but god is merciful and faithful towards you even when you are not faithful towards him and so his mercy causes him to withhold his faithfulness towards his word from executing his word speedily and immediately so that you are not consumed the bible says that i am the lord i change not therefore israel is not consumed why does he not change he does not change in his faithfulness towards you because his mercies endure to endure means to persevere you know what the mercy lord you are good and your mercy endure for that endurance means to persevere unajua ni vitu ngapi mungu anapitia juu yako akikuvumilia 
Masi ni uvumilivu wa Mungu kwa maisha yako. Siku ile Mungu ataacha kuwa mvumilivu tutakuwa kama Sodom na Gomora. That's why his mercies endure forever. So when you are praying you are courting his mercy. Unakatia hiyo uvumilivu ya Mungu. That's why God would forgive David. David would come to God and say, "Remember your tender mercies." <laughs> say, "Remember your mercies of old." God tells Isaiah, "You are first fathers transgressed." But David tells God, "You had mercy on our first fathers." Praise the Lord. When you are in transgression, you court the mercy of God. You you literally unakatia hiyo mercy. That's why he say, "Come boldly to the throne of grace, so that you may receive mercy in times of need." Let me teach about grace and mercy a little bit. Can I? not leniency to sin grace is not being is not god being lenient over your life ah. grace is what leads you to the fear of god <laughs> ah, i'm studying the fear of god and i understand that grace has part in the fear of god Do you know the fear of God is what retains your anointing? This generation this generation doesn't have the fear of God. That's why we can sin and then we come and we we don't even repent. The fear of God is when you have sinned you understand how God is merciful. You understand his power to punish sin, but you also understand the power of mercy. And so you repent before you come to attend to him. That's the fear of God. The fear of God tells you that you need to come close to God. The fear of God causes you not to be hakuna mtu ataku vigil inaitangwaje. No one will be vigilant on you. No one will invigilate you so that you walk a holy life. Joseph was in a foreign land. And alikuwa anakatiwa na the wife of Potiphar every day we were not told the period of time but it was every day and he said how can i sin against my god that's the fear of god the bible said the fear of god leadeth to life and so grace leads you to the fear of god the fear of god leads you to god is not leniency to sin. Grace is actually the very throne of God. Ah. Uh, the book of Hebrews says, "Come to the throne of grace." Grace is the throne. David asked. He said, "Can your throne be allied with the wicked?" David said righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne and if the throne of God is grace then righteousness and justice are the foundations of grace grace is not just an ability grace is what God presides over grace is the throne of God The throne room is a holy place it is the holy of holies the throne is grace when you understand grace you will run away from sin ah grace is not condoning sin grace is not god's leniency towards sin grace is what leads you to the fear of god Grace is what you what makes you realize your righteousness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Mercy is the seat of God. Mercy is the holy seat of God. And we're going to talk about that later. That is very powerful. If you caught these two things in prayer, you will never be afraid of the devil. If you understand these two things, grace and mercy, you will never fear. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us look at the third level of sin. For trespass, we can look at Leviticus chapter 5, verse 14 to 15. Just write that down. People sin because of ignorance. The third level of sin is called transgression. Somebody say transgression. The first level of sin is called what? The second level of sin is? Now the third level of sin is transgression. Transgression means to exceed or to overstep. <laughs> some limit or some boundary to exceed or to overstep some limit or some boundary to act in violation of some law to transgress means not to do what you are supposed to do To trespass, there's a difference between to trespass and to transgress. To trespass means to do what you're not supposed to do. Or to be where you're not supposed to be. That's why Jesus said, when he, he was teaching prayer, he said, Forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us for doing those things we are not supposed to do. Praise the Lord. But now transgression is not doing what you are supposed to praise the Lord are we understanding each other are we learning something not doing what you are supposed to do Isaiah was told your first fathers they transgressed God was not actually angry with the people of Israel because of any other thing he was angry with them because they were transgressing. They were not doing what they are supposed to do. The greatest challenge of a Christian is not sin. The greatest challenge of a Christian is doing what they are supposed to do as a Christian. Ah... Uh. I am supposed to wake up in the morning to pray. When the alarm shouts at me, I put it off and return to sleep. I am supposed to be studying the first hours of the morning. But I enter the kitchen and eat. Then remember, I am supposed to be going to town and dash out. Forgetting my session with God. I am supposed to come to Thursday fellowship. But then because the rain is too much. I am afraid that the fares will go up. And so I go home. And forfeit the fellowship. I am supposed to come to Kesha. But because I feel a little bit tired. And tomorrow. In Saturday I will be going to work. I go to sleep instead of going to meet with God it is in the things that we are supposed to do that we are falling short ah. you see the challenge of a Christian is not in sinning the challenge of a Christian is in not doing the things we are supposed to do I am supposed to tithe, I don't tithe. I am supposed, that's why God tells the, the people in Malachi, will a man rob God? You are supposed to give me tithe, you are not giving me tithe. He says in Haggai, you are living in good palaces, while my house is in shambles. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. He says, you are satisfied, but they are the poor. You are not treating them the way you are supposed to treat them, according to the way I commanded you. And so, in transgression, we sin. And that's where the devil has us. Because the devil will fight for you not to do what you are supposed to do.